Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off the virtual pre-calculus with Unit 0, Lesson 2. Unit 0, Lesson 1 was just some algebra review. So, and you may do those in your textbook if you so desire. But formally, we're going to start off with a good, good review in Unit 0. But today, we're going to start off with Lesson 2. And a Lesson 2 is going to take us we're going to do some definitions, we're going to do the laws of exponents, and we're going to do simplifying some expressions. The first thing we're going to talk about is this very important definition about absolute value of x. And the thing you need to know is that the absolute value is certainly always positive. The absolute value of an expression, the absolute value of the number is always positive. The other thing that we noticed from, calc from algebra 2 was that absolute value is the distance a number is from 0 and distance is always positive, a number is from zero. And you definitely will want to follow along and fill out your textbooks. So having said that, evaluating absolute value expressions should be fairly easy. So here I have the example here where x is negative 5 and y is equal to 3, and I want to evaluate this expression. So all I'm going to do is put negative 5 and 3, negative 5 in for x, and 3 in for y. So I have x, which is negative 5, minus 6 times 3, and then I want the absolute value of that, plus the absolute value of negative 3 times negative 5, plus 3 times 3, that is y. So if I notice here, on this first absolute value here, I have negative 5 minus 18, which is negative 23. Let's write that over here. So it's going to be the absolute value of negative 23 plus, wish there was a little more room in here, but there isn't. And then what do we have here? In this next absolute value, we have negative 3 times negative 5, which is 15, plus 9 is 24. So I have the absolute value of negative 23 and plus the absolute value of 24. I've got the 24 because I have positive times neg negative times negative is positive, plus 9, which is going to be 24. And this is going to be negative 5 minus 6 times 3, which is negative 18 minus 5, negative 23. So now what is the absolute value of negative 23? That's going to be 23 plus 24. And we see that that is 47. Okay. And let's do the next example then. The example, next example is the absolute value of negative 5. Pardon me. A little error there. I thought, golly gee, why the same? So if x is negative 2, I'm going to put negative 2 minus 6 times negative 5 because I have the new y here, that absolute value of x, which is negative 2, and the y is negative 5, putting that in there, plus the absolute value of negative 3 times negative 2, plus 3 times negative 5. And let's evaluate that expression there. So I have negative 5 here. I have negative 5 times, or negative 6 times negative 5, which is positive 30 minus 2, so this first expression here, let's do that in blue, this is going to be negative 2 plus 30, which is 28, positive 28, the absolute value of that plus, what's going to go in here? I have negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, plus negative 15, that's going to be negative 9 in here, write that in blue, you can certainly check my arithmetic, and it's not the case that I won't make an arithmetic error, sometimes I will, so I have negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, plus negative 15. That's going to be negative 9. And now I have two positives, because the absolute value of 28 is 28, plus 9. And that is going to be 37. So two examples there. Okay. So there's going to be some homework assignments that where you're going to have to evaluate some absolute value expressions, fairly straightforward. This would be a review from Algebra 1 or certainly at the very most Algebra 2. And now we have the very important 
laws of exponents on this review sheet as well. The product rule says that if I multiply like bases, all I do is add the exponents. So a nice example for that, we're going to keep this example very easy. An example of this, go down here, is going to be 2 cubed times 2 to the fourth power. I have like bases. The bases don't change. All I do is add the exponents. So this is going to be 2 to the 3 plus 4, which is 2 to the seventh power. And if I do the quotient rule for exponents, if I had, and I don't know why, I will throw this out there. Students struggle with the laws of exponents. When we did this in algebra two, a lot of students struggled. So that's what we're going to, this is a very good review. So if I have like bases, and I'm dividing by like bases, what I do is subtract the exponents. So here's a nice, really nice example. I have 5 to the 6th divided by 5 to the 4th. That's going to be 5. Not 5 divided by 5. It's 5 to the 6th divided by 5 to the 4th. is 5 to the 6th minus 4, which is 5 squared. Keep in mind, if you want to multiply this out, you can, or you can leave it as exponents. That's Leave it as the base, and that's fine as well. Power to a power. Power to a power. This is the only time that you're going to multiply the exponents. Here's my nice example here. I have 2 to the x to the 4th raised to the 3rd power. So if I do, well, I better wait for that example. I know what I can do. I will do this. I'm going to combine power of a product and power of a power with this one example right here. So this is going to take care of both of these products. And here I have a product, I have a product 2 to the x to the 4th, but this is, you can't forget that that's 2 to the 1. So this is 2 to the 1 to the 3rd power and x to the 4th to the 3rd power. So how am I going to write that? That's going to be 2 to the 1 times 3 times x to the 4 times 3. This is to the power to the power prod, power to the power example, 1 times 3, and 4 times 3, and this is power of a product as well. So this is going to be 2 cubed times x to the 7th power. When a lot of people see this expression, they make the mistake, they don't tag the exponent on the first factor of that as well. Okay, so that was an example that took care of both of those laws of exponents, which that's a good deal. Now I have power to a zero, power of zero. Anything to the zero power except zero is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Here's a nice example. If I have x squared, y to the fourth, oh my goodness, three, x to the fourth, x to the fifth power, we'll just say, if all that's to the zero power, all of that is just the expression for a real number, that is equal to one. Provided, now I can't have this expression to equal zero, so a couple things have to happen here. x cannot be zero, because if x was zero, then this whole thing would be well, the whole thing is not defined if x is 0 because you cannot not have 0 on the bottom. And y cannot equal 0. So those are two things provided these things, provided x does not equal 0 and provided y does not equal 0, this guy is 1. Okay. And we have some really nice examples, some assignments that use these power laws of exponents. So let's do negative exponents, and we're going to look at negative exponents at the bottom of this page. This is very important and can be confusing. Here's our nice example for this. If I have 2 to the negative 3 power, that's the same as the base, the negativeness or positiveness of the exponent has nothing to do at all whatsoever with the positiveness or negativeness of the expression. That, if you look at that, that rascal right there looks negative. It is not negative. 
What that is, by the negative exponent rule, we're going to write that as 1 over 2 cubed. Because you take the base as 2, you leave the base alone, but you just take the negative exponent and put him downstairs. And that's going to be, and you can write as 1 over 2 cubed as 1 eighth. Okay? And the final example here is going to be a fraction to a power. And let's see, we'll do this example in green. If I have 5 over 6x to the second power, <coughs> pardon me, that's simply going to be 5 squared over 6x squared. And now I have to use that product to a power and the power to a power. So that's going to be 5 squared over 6 squared x squared. And you can leave it like that. If you want to multiply your numbers out, you can. Or you can leave that rascal like this is fine as well. Now we have some examples that use the negative exponent and the positiveness and negativeness of an expression. So let's do these examples because I'm telling you what. If you could pause the video and try these four expressions, 90% of students do not get all four correct. Some students get some of them correct. So pause the video. And we're back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a fraction to a power on this. That is going to be negative, one, or pardon me, oh my goodness. That is going to be 1 to the negative 2 over 2 to the negative 2. 1 to any power is 1. I have this negative exponent on the bottom. I'm going to bring that up top side, and that's going to be 2 squared. And then we can take that 1 down here, 1 squared, and we know 1 squared is 1. So this guy here is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. 4. It certainly doesn't look like 4. This is the expression that most people get wrong right here. This is negative 2 squared. If you notice, the negative is not in the parentheses. There is no parentheses around negative 2. So what that is, that is simply negative 4. A lot of people miss that one. I had a lot of students confused on that. That's just negative 2 squared. It's the order of operations being applied there. You do the exponents before you do the addition or subtraction. This rascal here, now this does mean, let's do this guy in purple. This is negative 2 times negative 2. Oh, oh, which is negative times negative is positive. This guy here is 4. And this guy, negative exponent rule, that's 1 over 2 squared, and that's going to be 1, 4. Okie dokie. So I'll let you pause that. And we're going to go to the next page here. And we're going to try some of these examples right here. All right, so let's do this example right here. We're going to call this example A. We're going to be very methodical about this. I have the twos here. I can split it up to make it nice and easy. I have the x's here. And I have the y's. I'm going to use the division on all of these, the division property of a like basis. This guy is going to be 2. Keep in mind that's a 1. This is going to be 1 minus negative 2. This is going to be x to the negative 2 minus 3. 
x, not a y, you silly. And this is going to be y to the 5 minus negative 7. So what do we have that? And we're going to write it up here on top side. This is going to be 2, 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2. So that's going to be 2 cubed. This is going to be x to the negative 5. And this is going to be y to the 12. And what I want to do is write that without any negative exponents. And so that's going to be 2 cubed y to the 12th over x to the 5th. Okay, let's do another example here. We're going to do this example in the same way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write all the separate bases. I have threes to the negative 2 divided by 3 to the negative 3. Uh-oh, I have to use the product power here. That's going to be x squared, y squared, because that's what x, y squared is. And I still have an x to the fifth on bottom. And I have a y to the negative on bottom. So this x squared y squared came from this dude right here. And that is simply x to the 1. So good deal I caught that. Ooh, good deal. That was a nice error that I made there. Because for a moment I thought the exponent was on the outside of that parentheses. It was not. So that's just the same as x to the 1 times y squared. Okay, and so now we're going to use the quotient property of like bases. And we're going to rewrite this. This is going to be 3 to the negative 2 minus negative 3. x to the 1 minus 5. And y to the 2 minus negative 5. What does that give me? That's going to give me 3. Negative 2 plus 3 is going to be 1. This is going to be x to the negative 4. 1 minus 5. And this is going to be y to the 7. And if I want to write that with positive exponents, this is equal to 3y to the 7th over x to the 4th. Okay. In the light of time here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the answers to these guys, and I want you to work them out in your notes and make sure you can get it. So here's the answer to this one. This is going to be 4y to the 9th over 3x. This one right here is going to equal 24x to the 6th y squared. So I challenge you to use your the examples and laws of exponents and see if you can take that expression and end up with that. See if you can take that expression and end up here. And we're going to finish with the last examples from this unit. And this again talks about absolute value, positive or ne negative. Here I have x is equal to a and y is equal to b, where a is greater than 0 and b is less than 0. And a is greater than 0 here. And the absolute value of a is 2.1. Well, a is greater than 0, so what is a? That makes A. Doesn't this say that A has to be 2.1? B is less than 0. But the absolute value B is 2.2. What, what does that tell me? That tells me that B has to be negative 2.2. And now I want to determine if the following expressions are true or false. So I have x minus y, and x, this is, x is equal to a, so I'm going to just put this right here, x is equal to a, and y is equal to b, so that tells me right here that y 
is equal to negative 2.2. So x is 2.1, y is 2.2. And I have x minus y. Is that positive or negative? Well, x minus y, that's going to be 2.1. Whoopsie, sorry. 2.1 minus negative 2.2. And I have a minus negative is going to be positive. So is this less than zero? No. This is a this is a false statement here. This one's false. And now I have x minus absolute value of y. X is 2.1. So is this is 2.1 minus the absolute value of y, which is negative 2.2. And that is going to be, ladies and gentlemen, 2.1 minus 2.2. And yes, indeed. I have a smaller number subtracted from it, a larger number. So this rascal here is indeed true. This one right here, x plus y less than zero. So I'm going to have 2.1. Let's go to a different color. 2.1 plus a negative 2.2. No absolute values. That's going to be negative. Is that less than zero? You bet that is less than zero. So this is a true. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to give you the answers to the rest of these and challenge you to figure them out. So this rascal right here, this is going to be false. You need to work these out. X minus Y, this is going to be true. X minus the absolute value of Y. False. X plus Y is greater than zero. False. And this negative absolute value of X times Y plus 5, is that greater than zero? And that is a true. So I want you to work those out on your own. You will have an assignment for this lesson. Uh, we'll post that assignment on Google Classroom.